My name is Mama Fibri from Group C. Today I want to do the lead pipe, which is seismic test, measuring the car width, adherence, and brake test. For lab 5, we're going to use the console code RAVRT0094 SE, wagging frame, adherence test, brake tester, and remote control. So firstly, for choose the first box, we need to press F1. For second box, we need to press the F2. And for the third box, press F3. And lastly, for fourth box, we press F4. So if we press F2, we can recall the previous test. If you press F3, we can choose which test we want to run, such as side slip, weight, and adherence. If we unselect it, the box will turn to grey color. So, the first step is we need to press the F4 button on the keyboard to start the testing. Next, drive the car slowly to the scale to record the weight of the front axle load. Then, we wait for the result on the screen. Next, the machine will proceed to the next test which is adherence test. So, as we can see, the adherence test will take from the left and right side of the car. So, this is the appear on the screen while the adherence test is running. So, both left and right in good condition. So for the next test is the braking test. So firstly, we need to place the car on the ramp and make sure the car in neutral position gear. And then the machine will run the car. So we need to wait for 10 seconds and then we will push the brake very hard so we can get the result of the braking performance of the car. So as we can see, the car is braking so hard. Then, the result of the braking performance will appear on the screen of the machine. So, as the result, we get the good condition of the braking performance of the car. So, the next test is the for measuring the weight of the rear axle load tire and then after that we proceed to the adherence test for the rear axle tire so as we can see this is what appear on the screen of the machine so the screen of the machine will show the weight of the rear load axle and the adherence test for rear axle tire So both is in good condition. So for the next test, we are going to test the rear brake performance. So firstly, we need to make sure the gear in neutral position and first, we are going to test the rear brake performance using leg pedal and then after that, we are going to hand brake. So push the brake hardly to get uh, the result of the brake performance. So as we can see here, the result braking performance on the screen of the machine. And we can see here the result is in good condition. So next we're gonna test the braking performance of the handbrake system. So firstly let the machine run up the rear tire and pull hardly the handbrake. Then, as the result, we're gonna see on the screen of the machine that handbrake performance of this car is in good condition. So, the result of the lab is we can see here the adherence for the front and the rear is in a good condition, and for the braking performance, for the front and rear condition also in good condition and then the 
emergency performance also in excellent condition so this is the test summary of the car so this is the result of paint that shows the brake front for right wheel is around 180 and the front left wheel is 220 the force that exit for the rear right wheel is 170 newton and for left rear is 150 newton lastly the brake force for the parking brake is yeah, for the right rear side is 50 newton and for the left rear side is around 120 newton so let's move to the next part which is the question so for the question Based on the inspection and observation, why brake left hand and right hand must difference less than 30%? Discuss based on Malaysia Puspakom regulation. So, a good condition brake disc generate less than 10% difference in force between left and right brakes. So, then the system brake was balanced and successful braking was achieved. If the car not achieved this standard, the car will experience not balanced brake force on left and right side, which can lead car accident during high speed driving so question two is what would happen if adherence difference more than 10 percent so firstly the calm about of the adherence does show the least wave decided amid such shaking in connection to the inactive wave of the wheel the more prominent the adherence the superior the road holding of the vehicle so next if below standard adherence or excessive difference are shown the shock absorber should not be immediately replaced it is first best to check whether the out of tolerance to result might be due to the other factors mentioned previously such as tire pressure and load distribution. Next is discussion. The result of this shows that the value of the brake force for front right wheel around 180 newton and for front left wheel is 220 newton. And next the force that exit for the rear wheel is 170 newton and for left rear is 150 newton. Lastly, the brake force for the right rear side is 50 newton, and for the left rear side is around 120 newton. So, as the conclusion, braking system is the most important system in a car that used to reduce the car speed when driving. If the braking system is less than efficient, then the percentage of accident is increased. A good braking system should have this characteristic, which is one stable braking performance the braking force on the left and right wheel of the same axle must be the same which can ensure to the maximum extent that there are no driving deflection slide and other slip phenomena during emergency braking two the working reliability the part of the brake system must be complete and reliable and it did need to install security equipment and alarm device and three good brake thermal stability the friction plate of the brake has a good anti-heat phase fading capability and for its good hysteretic nature which is the delay time should be as short as possible it includes the required time from the driver depressing the brake pedal to achieving the braking performance and the time from releasing brake pedal to removing brake completely so that's all thank you 